door for me when you touch my life and open my eyes and woke me up inside I was dead before you gave me a reason to live and now I joyfully Jesus, I surrender my life to your blood I surrender my name for your glory I surrender my heart to your will I surrender my dreams to the plans you have for me Thank you for showing sure. Welcome to our worship today. My name is Tracy and this is my husband Andrew and together we run the Salvation Army here in South End. It's really good to be back with you this week. I enjoyed having some time off and I'm grateful to Andrew for holding the fort during that time. But it's good to be together to worship again today. January is a month in which Salvationists think particularly about renewing their commitment to God and last week in the Territorial Commitment Sunday meeting led by our territorial leaders, the idea of covenant was introduced. If you've not yet been able to look at that meeting, then there is a link at the bottom of the screen that will take you to it. And we would encourage you to do that. But today, Tracy is going to be looking at covenant in a slightly different way as she considers God's love for us and the love that that inspires within us. Our first song today is Who is on the Lord's Side, a good song for Commitment Sunday. Hope you enjoy it as we sing together.
We're going to now move into a time of prayer and in a moment Tracy is going to pray on our behalf but first of all we're going to sing along to or listen to a lovely song from the pen of Noel Richards to be in your presence this is my desire and after Tracy has prayed our own songsters are going to sing that lovely song come away. Sit at your feet where your love surrounds me and makes me complete. This is my desire, oh Lord, this is my desire. This is my desire, oh Lord, this is my desire. Let us pray together. Loving Heavenly Father, as we think about our commitment to you today, I want to thank you for those Christians all over the world who have continued to be committed to you throughout the pandemic. I thank you within the Salvation Army for our territorial leaders and for their leadership and for their commitment to us as they have endeavoured to lead us through these difficult times. I thank you for the divisional leaders all across the world who have also helped out their officers in their divisions. I thank you for the officers everywhere who have continued to support their core folk, whether that has been to provide online worship or whether that's been to go around their homes every week delivering sermon notes um, just to keep in contact with them and to keep them close to you. I thank you for the soldiers and the friends, the adherents, everybody that has been connected with the core that have continued to go out and provide some kind of service, whether that is in a practical way by delivering things or in other ways. We just thank you for everyone, Lord, for their commitment to you and for the way that they have continued to serve you through this time. And now as we continue in our worship to you and we recommit our lives once again to you, we ask, Lord, 
that to you will be evident, that we will sense your presence, that we will know the power of your Holy Spirit working in each of our lives. And we pray, Father, that what we do in secret at times, in your name, that people will come to know you, that they will see that, and they will want to find out more about you as a result. And so we ask, Lord, now that our worship is acceptable to you in your sight and that you will be blessed in everything that we do in your name today. Amen. Amen. Don't you be in such a hurry, cause it only leads to worry. There's a time to work, but there's a time to pray. Try to find a quiet place, to hear his voice and seek his face. I can hear the Spirit calling, come away. Be filled. Come and spend some time with me. Come away. Are you sinking in your sorrow? Are you worried about tomorrow? Are the pressures of this life too hard to bear? We're going to join together now in singing a contemporary version of an old gospel classic, Will Your Anchor Hold? I'm very grateful to our core business manager, Andy Pease, for sending me a link to this audio track. If there are songs that you would like us to use in our virtual worship, then please do get in touch and we'll do our best to accommodate your wishes. Let's sing together, Will Your Anchor Hold in the Storms of Life? And after we've sung, we will wait upon you for the offering. Yeah. 
strong tides lift and the cables strain. Will your anchor drift or fall We have an anchor that keeps our soul steadfast and sure. Deep.
We're going to sing again words that will be very familiar to many of you. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. Today is taken from Romans chapter 12 and it's the first two verses. With eyes wide open to the mercies of God, I beg you, my brothers, as an act of intelligent worship, to give him your bodies as a living sacrifice, consecrated to him and acceptable by him. Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mould, but let God remould your minds from within so that you may prove in practice that the plan of God for you is good, meets all his demands and moves towards the goal of true maturity. Amen. Amen.
Like many Salvation Army fellowships in the United Kingdom, we have a tendency to hold Commitment Sunday on the second Sunday of the year. This is because generally the first Sunday in the new year is not as well attended as the second. People are still recovering from Christmas and the new year, sleeping off their turkey and Christmas pudding and visiting family and friends. Obviously this year has been very different. Festive food and chocolate consumption has definitely gone up and it has at least in this household anyway whereas visiting family and friends has been largely non-existent. Last week we shared two links, one which encouraged people to join with our territorial leaders, which very much focused, as you would expect, on the theme of covenant and our normal Sunday worship that wasn't really about commitment at all. However, today we are going to be focusing on this idea of covenant. But I want to approach the subject in a slightly unconventional way. A covenant is an agreement between two parties which is mutually beneficial and rewarding. This is part of the reason why covenants take a long time to work out. For example, the recently signed trade agreement between the EU and the UK seemed to take an age to sort out. This is because both parties want to make sure that the benefits delivered through the agreement are equally distributed. If you are forced to agree to something that is not mutually rewarding, that is not a covenant. It is an abuse of power. A good example might be a family arranging the marriage of their young daughter to an older man. The family brokering the deal might benefit financially, but the deal, if it goes against the wishes of the daughter, is not a covenant in the true sense of the word, but is a form of abuse. However, when we look at the covenant between ourselves and God, it seems as though all the benefits are for us. God doesn't need our commitment. He doesn't need our praise. He doesn't need our assistance. In fact, he doesn't need anything. So why has he entered into a covenant with us? Last week in his sermon, the territorial commander described the covenant that exists between God and us as a deal too good to be true. He said that God, an eternal being, embraced death so that we mortals could live forever. When we heard those words, it reminded me of Wesley's carol that no doubt you have sung many times in recent weeks. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. So why does God enter into this covenant, this agreement, or perhaps more appropriately, this relationship with us? It is because of love. In John 3, 16, we are told that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And coincidentally, in 1 John 3, 16, we are told this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. I'm not going to apologise for the Bible reading I shared with you earlier, even though I have to admit that Andrew and I have a tendency to repeatedly turn to these verses. I'm not going to apologise because, as Andrew reminded us last week, they are a perfect description of consecration. And consecration, if you like, is the condition that we have to meet to enjoy the benefits of the covenant God has made with us through Jesus. In that reading, Paul tells us to offer our bodies as living sacrifices. But he stresses the fact that our motivation for that act of consecration must 
be love. With eyes wide open to the mercies of God, I beg you, says Paul, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. God's love, being recipients of God's love, knowing God's love, abiding in God's love and sharing God's love with others is a repeated theme in Paul's writings and sits at the very heart of the gospel. We're all familiar with Paul's prayer in his letter to the Ephesians, which Anthony also quoted last week in his sermon, where Paul says, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. I want to pause for a moment there and allow the words which I've just read to you, which will come up on the screen now to seep into the very depths of our hearts and minds. Because in these verses, we find ourselves at the very center of God's covenant with us. That we might know the love of God, even though it is beyond comprehension. Let's just pause and consider that. One of the challenges that we face with the Word of God is that because we love the sentiments contained within its pages, we become over familiar with some passages and as we know, familiarity can breed contempt. Now, I don't think actually that any of us by being over familiar treat it with contempt, but the words can trip off the tongue so easily without us taking in their full meaning. Christianity is all about love. Christianity is love. And you can't experience love without at least two people being involved. We said earlier on that God doesn't need anything. But we are told in 1 John chapter 4 verse 8 that God is love. And although he doesn't need us, he created us so that he could love us. In Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3, the prophet quotes God saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. If we read on in the chapter I quoted earlier in 1 John chapter 4, in verse 16, we read again, God is love. And the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in them. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 1 we read, See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. If we were to read Psalm 131, we would be compelled to repeat the refrain, his loving kindness is everlasting. In Psalm 103 verse 8, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. Some sections of Christianity muddy the waters when it comes to sharing the good news about Jesus. They preach an exclusive gospel that is all about condemnation and judgment, forgetting that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but as I've already said, because he loved the world. Somebody once said that Christians are like tea bags. You only know how good they are when you put them in hot water. 
I think that's probably true of all people, not just Christians. History teaches us that some of the finest hours of humanity have occurred when, metaphorically speaking, our backs have been against the wall. I literally don't have time this morning, but I know that if I had Googled acts of compassion, selflessness or heroism that have occurred in the last 10 months, I would have found many. These acts of kindness have even at times crossed the religious and political divide and the differences that have so often identified us in recent years have disappeared in a mutual desire to protect each other. As we move now into a time of commitment, I want us to be absolutely clear about the covenant that we are being asked to enter into. The terms and conditions of this covenant, the expectations placed upon us, do not run to thousands of pages but can be summarised clearly in the words of Jesus found in Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 to 40. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Those of you who receive weekly deliveries from us will have received a commitment card that looks like this. And those of you who don't receive deliveries will have had a digital version emailed to you. If you're watching this and don't belong to our church but would like one, then please email me and we will happily send you one. I want to draw your attention to the words on the back of that card, just above the space for your signature. Words written by Will Brand, which we're going to sing together in a few moments. By the love that never ceased to hold me, by the blood which thou didst shed for me, while thy presence and thy power enfold me, I renew my covenant with thee. God bless you all.
Well, thank you for tuning in today. It's good that you joined us and we hope that you found this time beneficial and that you felt drawn closer to God as a result. If by any chance you're watching this and you're not a church attender, especially somebody that comes to the Salvation Army, we can sometimes use terminology which isn't very recognisable. So if you want to find out more about that, please do get in touch via the email address that is shown at the end of our worship or contact the Salvation Army that is local to where you live. Now we're going to sing our concluding song from the pen of Catherine Baird, really beautiful words. And I draw your attention to the last four lines of this song, which fit in so well with uh, the message that Tracy shared with us earlier. As morning overwhelms the night, so truth shall sin or throw, and love at last shall vanquish hate as sunshine melts the snow.